Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I'm so excited to celebrate with you today, my friend, Wade Caves. I've actually known Wade for a while, and really, he is somebody who's been making waves in astrology for at least a decade now, because that's how long I've known him, just over a decade. And he really is one of these people who knows his stuff. I do want to say that he is actually a student of the one and only one of our great living legends, Deborah Holding. I had the great chance to interview Deborah Holding 10 years ago, and she was so loving and supportive of me and my work and so encouraging. And I will always hold her so close to my heart. And it is Wade that in many ways carries forward that very tradition of understanding astrology and horror astrology in particular as a form of divination. And these are actually things that Wade is going to be teaching at Synchronicity University coming up in our January 2023 speaker series. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, Wade is one of the big dogs. As you know, if you've been to the speaker series before, I always try to have one or two big dog astrologers and then like three or four sort of up and coming astrologers that I think more people need to know. Well, Wade is one of those people who really has established himself and is a master teacher. And we're going to have so much fun because he is my very dear friend. Wade, welcome. Oh. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Can I be a golden retreat while we're talking big doves? I mean, we just got to go through the list of what they could be. I just want to make sure I'm a sweet one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want to be a golden retriever? You go for it. You well, do it. It's not, it doesn't really fit my personality, does it? But, you know, it's, it's it sheds everywhere. It makes a mess wherever it goes. So, you know, maybe it fits. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because I think maybe you have something in your chart that has you leaning towards sarcasm and stuff because that's not how I know you. <laughs> I know you as this really sweet and friendly and open person and somebody who just is, yeah, you've been very loving and, and dear to me since we first met, full of compliments. I love that about you as well. I remember some of the compliments you gave me and how much that meant to me at the moment. So I feel like you see good in other people, you see beauty in other people and all of that is just so lovely. So, okay, you oh. see yourself how you wanna see yourself. I will also say this though, looks can be deceiving, not for you, of course, because you're so gorgeous, but my ex had a American bully, right? His name was Biggie. I shared Biggie like crazy. He was named after Biggie Smalls. I had portraits done of him and famous Biggie Smalls outfits and stuff like that. But anyways, Biggie was an American bully, which is like, you know, a real pit bull kind of breed. And he was yeah. the sweetest dog that you ever wanted to know. So uh, looks can be deceiving, but you look like a, a beautiful, lovely person, which you are. You're so sweet. Somehow I feel like all I've done is receive compliments since we started this. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the point. I really like good energy. I recently did um, a marathon of Daddy Yankee concerts. Now, oh my if you gosh. don't, do you know who Daddy Yankee is? Come because... on, are you joking? Of course I do. <laughs> I love oh you. Oh my gosh. Yes, Daddy Yankee. 10 years ago, I didn't know who he was. And then his music right. like really changed my life. And now he's retiring. So I did like five concerts, like within a month, four of them were within a week like a crazy yeah. person. And anyways, why did I start talking about Daddy Yankee? I, I had a point, but it's eluded me right now. You say <laughs> Daddy Yankee, and I just want to come back. Dance. But you yeah, know what yeah, I can say, back. what Go. I thought was so fun, because at the ESAR conference, um, uh, yeah, you were um, on the stage at the ESAR conference, wasn't it this past, uh, was it in August? And I just absolutely loved the sound and the music that attended, you know, your onstage presence. And that was like, uh, I think Daddy Yankee was in there, if I remember. Exactly. Correctly. Yeah, that ended up being my theme song, <laughs> Gasolina, which really says everything. Okay, I remember why I brought up Daddy Yankee. After seeing his concert the same show five times I sort of got yeah. what was coming next right I always knew what he's going to talk about even if he makes little variations he'll do a few songs and then make a speech and it might be different but then he'll always end with saying something specific and then that starts the next set and the next set so he did this like four or five times and I remember like when he first stops like first he does like four songs and then he stops and he goes okay buena vibra 
buena vibra a todos, right? Which is basically good vibes, everybody, like good vibrations. So basically he's setting an intention to say, yo, don't fight. I know everybody's having beer and having a lot of fun and it's sexy music, <laughs> but don't break out into fights. I'm not here for that, right? That's another yeah. way to say what he, he didn't put it that way, but he just said buena vibra. And so I, that's why I mentioned it because right now you and I, this is Buena Vibra. This is good vibrations, good yeah, vibes. that's what it's all about, Buena Vibra. I love that. Yeah. That's great. And so, Wade, okay, let me ask you, how did you come to know Deborah Holding? Because I, I hope it's okay oh, yeah. for me to ask you. I know she's your teacher and you have your own identity. Absolutely, as people oh, are no, going to I'm, see. But <laughs> she's my she, best friend. Everything that I learned, I learned from her in one way or another. You know, it's it, I'm so happy to be able to speak to her legacy that's still being built, you know. And so I think it, it's, of course, I think that's great. I... Um, <clears throat> started my study of astrology in the psychological camp and um, became aware of horror astrology around the time that I was actually thinking about leaving astrology. I just kind of, this was like in 2011, 2011, probably 2010, 2011. Um, and I, I, I can remember thinking, I mean, I was in college at the time, not in 2011, I think 2008, nine, it was hard for me to talk with my friends about because I was, you know, here I was this rational individual who's studying the sciences with friends who were in the sciences. And there was this seemingly contradictory element about me that I was willing to engage in this superstition of astrology. And what is that about? And, you know, maybe I had one screw loose, what, you know, and at the time I thought maybe they're right. You know, maybe, maybe this is all like, I just kind of need to take a break. Um, but I, uh, you know, there was a boy on campus that I thought was really cute and he was into astrology, you know, and then that'll he was into it. astrology. Yes. Yeah, that'll do it. And and he was into astrology and I thought, well, you know, there's my end. You know, I, I know I can talk astrology. <laughs> and so we became friends. Nothing, you know, developed out of that. But uh, he was um, regularly on Skyscript and introduced me to Skyscript as a website. Skyscript is currently, I would just like to say, in the process of being rebuilt. It was for a decade, the number one astrology website. Um, Deborah is a mother. She's a mother of, you know, she had four children and she re realized how difficult it was being a mother uh, to study astrology. And she said, you know what, all this hard work that I'm doing, going to the libraries, kid on a hip, three in the hand, trying to photocopy these documents. She said, no mother is going to have to come after me and do this themselves. So she, what she did was she made a repository of all the things that she was researching, the information she found, put that up online for free and it became the number one um astrological website for you know uh, i think over a decade it hadn't been you know revitalized over you know since you know the the new html packages came around and it started to look a little dated but right now it's getting completely overhauled so if you're interested in seeing what that's looking like some of the pages have already started and you know you can be um, also a support to that uh, through um, subscribing to her Patreon if you're interested. But at any rate, um, so I found Skyscript and on there's all this information about horary. Now, let me just, for those who are not familiar, um, let me share a little bit about what horary is. So horary is, you know, the, um, it's divination on transits, if we really just want to get to the nuts and bolts of it. We have, um, a moment in time where there's a particular issue, problem, scenario that needs to be explored, and we throw the bones, read the tea leaves. In this case, we cast an astrological chart and use a process that has been, you know, refined over 2,000 years, really. I mean, maybe even more. I mean, we, that has been really kind of um, fine-tuned to be able to then give some kind of guidance on the likely trajectory that that scenario is headed um, and what we can do, um, you know, to, um, to, to engage with our problem in a, in a new and useful way. So, there's no question that you can't put to this technique. I mean, will I get pregnant this year? Will I get the job? You know, I, I can't seem to buy this property. What do I need to do to buy the property? Can I get this property? Um, you know, I'm I'm single. I, I, I feel like something's not right. How can we explore what's going on? I mean, anything, anything. Um, missing objects, um, missing people. You know, you can, you can really, if it's an honest question and it's coming from sincere intent and it's your business to know, we can look at anything that you want. Now, when I found that technique, I mean, I just have to chills all the way down my arms. I just thought this is exactly the kind of astrology that I want to do. Um, 
And it seemed to me that everywhere I was reading, all the fingers were pointing back to one person who seemed to be, um, you know, really leading the educational charge as far as horror astrology is concerned, and that's Deborah Holding. So I saved up um, as much money as I could. Um, I, I, I was studying through the Mayo Astrology uh, School with Wendy Stacy at the time. Wendy and Deborah, Deborah are good friends. And so when I went to UAC 2012 in New Orleans, um, <clears throat> I met Deborah there and went to a workshop and um, that she was offering and and uh, got to kind of, you know, get involved uh, there with the, the horror experience, see it live, you know, see what's going on. I saved up, I was working, a, you know, minimum wage job at the time, probably like nine, 15 an hour or something like really low. And I just saved every penny, quarter, nickel, dime, whatever I could. And I, I booked a ticket to London and uh, I studied for a week. Um, and, uh, it was like a 40 hour course, five days, eight hour days. It was like intense, very intense. Um, and, uh, you know, my, the trajectory of my life permanently changed. Uh, you know, I think about a year later, I was starting to practice on my own. And then two years after that, I was teaching maybe a little early in retrospect, you know, I think it's always better to have more time under your belt before you start picking up the, the you know, the, the teaching process, but that's what I did. And so um, now, you know, I teach that same program that I learned from, you know, back in 2013, it's almost, almost 10 years, you know, next year, next June, it'll be 10 years, that'll be the anniversary of that. Um, and, uh, and so I am happy to distill, you know, some of the most exciting key points for Synchronicity University in my talk divination, uh, the, the divinatory art of horary astrology is the name of the the title and so um you know this this um you know this class is it's really a teaser it's about opening up you know a field of introspection giving uh the synchronicity university students an opportunity to see what horary astrology is capable of and what they're capable of because this is absolutely learnable you watching this you can learn how to do it. You know, if I could learn how to do it, anybody can. So um, it'll be really great. I'm so excited to be able to deliver the program for you guys. Yeah. And it's interesting over the years of Synchronicity University, so many people have asked me to uh, have horary classes there, but I really mm -hmm. felt like everything I know about horary, like in a, a real sense of knowing yeah. and being able to apply some principles there came from two sources. So one was my my uh, former dear professor, Jeffrey Cornelius. He is a big dog oh, in horary God, I love astrology. Jeffrey. I know, don't you? I mean, I love Jeffrey too. He's so yeah. brilliant and amazing. And yeah, he's a good friend. He's given he's he's given some really kind feedback. I mean, I um I did a sorry to interrupt your story. Um I I I met him a few years ago and, and he found out about a consultation I did for somebody who attends um, you know, they they have regular events, uh, the company of astrologers, and they had, you know, a group that attends. And one of the people in there was a client of mine, and she shared a horary that I did. And it was about a surgery. And it was, you know, it, it made a pretty big difference for her. And um, it was so nice. Jeffrey wrote me this lovely letter saying that, uh, you know, he just found the engagement with that topic, you know, captivating. And then I got to go fly out and present for them on the topic of astrological magic and, you know, this idea of, um, you know, talismanic magic and where it's coming from and, you know, all the kind of theoretical issues that brings forward. But he's brilliant. That book, Moment of Astrology, absolutely like top five astrological text, right? Absolutely. I think that, I mean, there are a lot of great books out there for when you're starting, but when you are serious about astrology, when you love astrology and you start moving beyond just the beginner level, the right. moment of astrology is a must. Everybody yep. who studies and cares about astrology knows who Jeffrey Cornelius is and knows that book. That's and right. it is absolutely brilliant. And it lays out this whole philosophical understanding of what the moment of astrology actually is and explores how astrology and divination are so intimately tied. Right. And actually, Jeffrey Cornelius wrote an academic paper uh, where he talked about the difference between a speculative reading and a realized reading. Mm. And so he says that a speculative reading is basically you, um, you know that Venus square Pluto could mean 15 things. And yeah. you're in that moment of a reading and you might list those 15 things it could mean for this person. But a realized reading is it requires a jump where you yeah. speak truth to the client's experience, 
where you speak to their heart. And that is that space in which we jump from the technique, which is very important to know. And we jump to that place of uh, truly experiencing astrology in the That's moment right. of it. And actually, because of that, his that understanding, my first book was called Astrology Realized. Mm -hmm. And it was, and I give him oh, full credit. Oh, wow. Was yeah. it, I didn't know that there was that connection. Of course, I yeah. know about your book, but I, I think I missed that. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that was, and I spend that time to give him absolute props, like to say, this comes from Jeffrey Cornelius. And, you know, that was another thing he impressed on me was honor the academic ancestors, honor yeah. from where your work comes from. This is how the legacy grows stronger and stronger. And so that's another thing I learned from him as well. But having said that, Deborah's website, that was one of the academic sources that we had. Like uh, when I was yeah. doing my master's in cosmology and divination with him and Patrick Curry and Angela Voss yeah. and Maggie Hyde, it was yeah. that website that was considered as having such great integrity that we mm. actually could use that as an academic source. But then yes, Deborah, I mean, gosh, to know her is to love her and, and to come across her work is to appreciate just how brilliant she is. And so- yeah. I know you're going to be teaching on horary astrology, which I'm really looking forward to, but I feel like what I use in terms of horary astrology in my own life, like if I can't find my wallet, I might pull up a chart really quickly. So much of what techniques I use, which are very beginner level for horary anyways, um, they come from the talk that I attended from you. <laughs> and so that was about <laughs> 10 years ago. I attended a talk at SODA. And, you know, because Jeffrey didn't want to actually like do astrology per se, like the technique of it when I was learning from him, he really wanted us sure. to understand the roots and what yeah. we are doing rather than uh, the actual technique and the practice of it. It was more important sure. for him to get our intention right and to ground ourselves in the history and philosophy of it. So yeah, in a very practical, immediate way, techniques I could use right away. That was from your talk like 10 years ago at the SOTA conference. So I'm really excited yeah. that you're going to be coming now to my school all these years later yeah, to stick with yeah. university. Yeah. And so once again, everybody remember, it is Wade that's going to be at Synchronicity University for the January 2023 speaker series. There's just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, really an unheard of rate to learn from Amazing. Wade and Amazing. some of these incredible other astrologers. Yeah, the whole philosophy really is to make really great great astrology classes accessible to the masses. And so yeah. we've been able to do that by offering this choose your tuition rate. And so I'm really proud of that as well. And I'm proud to have you there. Now, tell me, what's one thing, give us an astrology lesson here. What's one thing <laughs> I can understand and start to use right away to see the power of Hori work out in my okay. own way let's in which I will it. interact with astrology. Yeah, let's talk about it. The The number one thing that I would say that um, students frequently do not have full appreciation for, and it takes a little time for them to realize just how big of a deal this is, pay attention to activity that's happening on angles. For that, Just start there. So an event happens, a moment happens, maybe you're looking at a birth chart, give yourself permission to ignore everything else except for what planet is conjunct an angle okay so i had a consultation the other day um yesterday um and the gal that was um you know chatting with me she was born with mercury exactly on the ic now it's in the fourth house you know it's a little bit hidden but that's a very powerful energy you know planets what happens with the angles is planets, you know, they come up over the horizon. They've spent hours going from the fourth cusp up to the first. What really happens, and if you take this really far back, the the understanding about what's happening um, through the houses is that we're mapping the journey of these planets from one angle to the next. And everything that's happening in the cadent and succeedent houses, these are intermediate stages from one angle to another. The real crux is what's happening on an angle. So taking a look at her birth chart, you know, we've got Mercury on, on the fourth house cusp. It was in Virgo. 
And the conversation was very simple, you know, that, um, you know, she has a great deal of intelligence, but, you know, with Mercury, there's always a, a desire to contest and to, you know, to push and to prod and to, to tinker with things and try and change. It was just so funny watching her laugh and open up about how much she recognized herself in that description. Um, I, I had a consultation this morning where, um, you know, the, 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 the primary theme that was going on was um, it was about a Jupiter Mars conjunction uh, that this person had on the midheaven everything else could almost fall in the background the whole discussion was about uh what's going on with mars and jupiter so what i would suggest if you want to get a little bit more in motion is explore just how loudly and how pronounced planetary energies are when they are on an angle allow the sign to inform you but the sign is less important than the planet you know it's the, the planets are the ones that do the action and the sign tells you how they're dressed you know it gives you a little bit are we talking about you know per, well I don't need to go into details I guess you know Taurus versus Aquarius versus Cancer I think we get it those all look and feel a little bit different but Mercury on an angle is always going to be Mercury Venus on an angle is always going to be Venus Mars on an angle is going to be Mars so Take a look in birth charts for what's the angular planet. How does that contribute to our behavioral um, components? Um, how does it change our physical features? Um, to what extent <clears throat> does it give us a, a, an insight into our motivations or perhaps a little bit of a picture of what's going on at large? The, the general theme for each of the planets for the moon, that is a communicative, informative planet, and it also tends to put a spotlight in a particular place. Uh, for Mercury, uh, where we, and, and with the moon, I would also say that I, I know this maybe flies in the face of convention, but I think communication is more lunar than Mercury is. Mercury is like the telegraph system that can is actually connected connecting two places but the moon is the message itself that is moving between these two so mercury is the path that the lunar communication travels so with mercury we're talking about how things get connected our ability to reason uh, to what extent we like to challenge and destabilize things with venus of course we're talking relationships harmonizing things where beauty and um the, uh you know attention um are welcomed uh with the sun we're looking at honors and advancement and commitment and, you know the sun never changes its speed it's the only planet that moves like one degree a day so it's very consistent so the sun brings very consistent messaging um with mars <clears throat> anger frustration impatience but also you know a drive to do something you know to, and wanting to move when jupiter hits an angle it makes everything bigger you know and i, I with students from the school of traditional astrology where i teach uh sta.co if you're interested in looking up more um jupiter uh some of the students we were talking about how um do you remember that bombing in beirut that happened like years ago i think it was in 2020 there was like downtown beirut there was this huge explosion um and when uh you know i took a look at the astrology of that and put it in front of the um, graduates um in our graduates forum uh students came behind and started to add their own charts of things that they'd looked at you know at some stage and what was really striking it didn't take very long for people to notice in all of these major headline events jupiter was on an angle you know when jupiter comes to an angle things go from this big to this big the world sees it it's got an association with notoriety and fame and making things big and then with saturn there is a restrictive element things pull back there's a desire for conservatism and um you know not taking too big of a risk and also a likelihood for warnings to be issued at that stage so just you know play with it for a little while see how that goes in horary we will demonstrate for you the power of angular planets um and you will see that and there's nothing you learn in horary that doesn't have immediate applicability in every other branch so you're, if you think to yourself i don't need horary i don't plan on answering questions about missing dogs listen you do need horary every astrologer needs to have some exposure to this uh this technique um it, it is like the most elementary way uh that that our symbolism comes to life um and if you want to understand how to work with natal astrology better a good grounding in horary will help you do that and number one the, the first thing and the end thing of horary is what's happening on the angles so that's where i'd start <laughs> That's so powerful. I, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, I have 
all my angles are are lit up. There's something going on mm -hmm. in all the angles. And so I believe it. Well, so the thing is, you've got, a, yeah, you have a, 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 a huge personality and a huge following and you're all over the world. I mean, people who have a lot of activity on angles, they're everywhere you know, and there's a lot of voices competing for attention at that time. Sorry, I, I interrupted you again, though. What no, were you go say? for it. Go for it. I'm being selfish here. I get to have you give me feedback on my chart. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's all. I mean, when you got a lot of planets on angles, it gives you a lot of planets who might be, you know, it's like a crowded room and a lot of people are shouting, you know, and, and there's a lot of vibration that happens there, a lot of excitement and a lot of sharing of information. So, yeah. Isn't that powerful? And so when you were talking about the different planets, I love that because we can start applying that right away. And do you right. look at how like, if it's close to the ascended, it's you, if it's close to the descendant, it's yep. stuff that you project <clears throat> onto others. Do you like to look at if the, if the IC, it's very private, it's your past. If it's the MC, it's your career and the larger way in which you're known. That's, that's Do exactly you right. use it that way too, Yeah, right? that's exactly right. And you know, the, the angles are all powerful, but they're not um, they're not all the same, you know, they, they have different influences, things that are happening on the ascendant are emerging for the first time. It's called the ascendant. Things are being born in that space. So it's a place where there's a lot of power, but also potentially a lot of newness and, um, you know, it, it, it can feel, um, at that stage, like the celebration of new life. Um, and so those are energies that are very often welcomed and celebrated. Same thing with the 10th. You know, Manilia says that the 10th house is like the applause. Planets there, they are commanding applause. They are commanding honor. They are commanding this idea of, um, you know, respect and success and culmination and glory. And then we get opposite things with the fourth and the seventh. With the seventh, we have things that are potentially um, running in contrast to where we stand. Um, but it's it's also the case that we engage with ourselves through a mirror with the seventh house. I think that's something similar to how you worded it. And then with the fourth house, we're talking about very private inner workings that have you know a great deal of um, uh, in, in, inner, inner um, they're just very rooted. I mean, I, I can't tell you the number of um, horary charts I have where Mars is in the fourth house and people are talking about this problem. And the answer is you have unresolved anger. It's deep in there. You need to look at that, you know, or maybe even, you know, Jupiter. And, um, you know, if there's a Jupiter that's in bad shape in the fourth house, you're just deep down, you're, you're, you're trusting to luck and not pushing out enough into the world and making these things happen um mercury in the fourth house you know that you're 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 pulling very deeply from a symbolism of rationality logic um and you know maybe the world should get an opportunity to see that alongside you so yeah you definitely get visible hidden me them and of course those are you know very uh you know almost um you know too simplified but yeah you get it you know we have to kind of speak in aphorism sometimes and then develop the nuance uh with time but yeah that's amazing i love it so just what i've learned from you so far today it'll have me looking at those planets and the angles differently and mm -hmm. and as you said a good idea is to sort of stand back a little and just allow yourself to appreciate what's going on on the angles to take the chart in before you really dive in with the techniques but i'm sure of course with any talk of yours i've attended there's always that technical side of it too that you can build on for many many years to come and so i'm yeah. really excited about your talk Me too. Uh, what else what else would you like to share anything else you'd like to share before i give you back yeah, well, to I'm, the I'm, universe I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm excited about this talk too. I've developed this to be ready for people who have zero exposure to horary astrology. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know, I'm curious, I'm interested, but I don't know whether or not I'm ready for it. You are. Um, this um, material is going to walk you through the, um, you know, if, if you only had a handful of things to think about, what would those things be? How do we put that together? And then we'll have a really nice assortment of examples from my own case files. They're all fun, juicy, filled with really interesting tidbits. Um, and then, you know, of course, with these um, with these classes, it's so great when we get to have, um, you know, contributions from the audience and people joining in and throwing their suggestions forward. And so it'll be a really great dynamic, engaging conversation and hopefully whet your appetite for something that's, you know, new and exciting.
I'm so excited for your class. Once again, everybody, Wade Caves is coming to Synchronicity University as part of the January 2023 speaker series. And there's just a couple of weeks left, if that, to choose your tuition rate, as low as just $5 a class to learn from the likes of Wade Caves and others as well. Wade, thank you for being here. So excited about your upcoming talk. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everybody out there for watching. Until we connect again, take care. Bye.